Welcome to Prayer and Praise from the Church of the Epiphany, Meredith. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The words you have spoken are spirit and life, O Lord. You have the words of eternal life. Let us pray. Eternal God, sow in us your words of spirit and life, that we may desire what you promise, so that amid the many changes of this world, our hearts may there be fixed where true joys are to be found, and worship you in spirit and truth. Amen. We have gathered in our scattered lives before the Lord, who has the words of eternal life. Let us worship God together. simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required Search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking health and salvation. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, 
cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is slow to anger and full of compassion, forgiving all who humbly repent and trust in his Son as Saviour and Lord. God therefore forgives you in Christ Jesus. In him there is no condemnation. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we are all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds a common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Bountiful God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy and live according to it, that we may grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. There it is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to do with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the, of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. Let us say by alternate verses. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light to my path. I have vowed and sworn an oath to keep your righteous judgments. I have been afflicted beyond measure. Lord, give me life according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the freewill offerings of my mouth and teach me your judgments. I take my life in my hands continually yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your commands are my inheritance forever. They are the joy of my heart. I have set my heart to fulfil your statutes, always, even to the end. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Are you ready? From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at verse 1, titled The Parable of the Sower. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprung up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. When the, parables, when the disciples came and asked him, Why are you speaking to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to, th to them it has not been given. For to those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance, but from those who have nothing, even what they will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand. You will indeed look, but never perceive. For well, this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arrives on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields it, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receiving 
against the sun. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I judge and I defend, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is it. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of your people. Kindle in us the fire of the gospel that we may have confidence to proclaim it in word and action and be a sign of wholeness to a broken world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we're young, we find ourselves bemoaning conversations of the older folk speaking about times past, calling them the good old days. As I listen to those stories now, sure, there was a golden age of familiarity. But even those who tell the stories speak of times that were far from good. I've heard stories about how regular the floods were in a particular place, and how often the house was inundated with water. But that was okay, because their furniture was made out of kerosene tins, of which they had plenty, because they had no electricity, and the only lighting was by kerosene lamp. And I know I'm getting older, because I hear myself glorifying the good old days, when we played cricket on the road, we moved the garbage can wicket when the cars came, how we walked to the primary school and shops unaccompanied, by a parent, 
how we made our own fun from our own imagination, no computer games. And yet even then, behind closed doors, husbands were beating their wives and there was institutional, familial and figures of authority abusing trust with children. They were the good old, bad old days. In the parable of the soul we've just heard, there is something of this glorification of the good old days causing people to miss out what is actually happening in their present. Let me remind you. You will indeed listen, but never understand. You will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. It is, I think, understandable that which is familiar is comfortable and we yearn to be comfortable in the familiar. One of the struggles therefore that we may find ourselves in is when we're confronted with change. The reality is we are all willing to make change when we realise we need to change something and we make our own decision to change. It's more difficult when change is forced upon us and calls us to be moved from that which is familiar and comfortable. But throughout Scripture, God makes changes. It's not that God himself changes. God is changeless. So we speak of God's character as changeless. Not the way that God reacts with creation. That seems to be something that he changes. As Anglicans, we have adapted and developed the worship service for each generation, each context and each culture. According to our 39 articles, it is not necessary that traditions and ceremonies be in all places one and utterly alike for at all times they have been diverse and have may be changed according to the diversity of countries, times and men's manners. And also, it is plainly repugnant to the word of God and the custom of the primitive church to have public prayer in the church or to minister the sacraments in a tongue not understanded of the people. Continuing to do things the same way, simply because it is comfortable, is a danger to our mission as church to proclaim the gospel in each generation and culture. I suspect it is our resistance to change that is part of the reason we are experiencing a decline in this day and age. We make the mistake of thinking of the gospel passage that we have just read as being evangelistic. But in quoting Isaiah, the people Jesus is referring to that have dull hearts, that are hard of hearing, that are having difficulty seeing what is going on, are not those outside of the people of Israel. Isaiah, and therefore Jesus, is speaking to those who belong, who are apart. When we read the parable, we realise that the main subject is not the soil, but the sower, it's the sower who continues to sow the seed. The sower is generous. The sower is gracious. He continues to sow the seed despite the graded responses, the pathway, the birds, the rocky ground, the weeds of thorns and the good soil. The sower did not and does not stop sowing or limit where he sows. Therefore, we 
where those who are open to looking will see and listening will hear, there the kingdom of God will take root, be nurtured and sustained. There the kingdom of God will produce fruit of the kingdom. So we are the ones in whom God sows the word. The question we need to ask ourselves, are we holding on to things that are familiar and comfortable that are stopping us from hearing the word and bearing the fruit? As difficult as it may seem, the beauty of God's calling us to be and do things differently is of benefit to us. And I would heal them, says God through Isaiah. What God does is not out of contrariness. What God does is not to be irritating. And what God does is not because God can do whatever God likes. What God does is done in order to heal us and to, for the church to be a source of healing for the world. Jesus, quoting Isaiah, sits in the middle of this parable inadequately called the parable of the soils with its following explanation, which is probably the cause of its misnaming. But the parable, the explanation of use of parables, is not designed so we do not understand, that we do not hear, that we do not see. Rather, it's to explain that we can be collaborators in the inability to understand and turn and be healed. The danger for us, as it was real for those who were around to see Jesus and what Jesus was doing and hear what Jesus was saying. We can be so secure in what we've always done. We can be so secure in what has been said and those things become for us like the birds, the path, the weeds and the rocks, causing us to choose not to look and listen and see and hear the new and creative ways that can be before us. It's the hardest thing for us to allow to be changed, if you like, is that space between our ears, our ability to think change our culture as church. However, God is inviting us to explore how we might be this parish of three centres. May we be people who choose to look and listen and hear and see what God is inviting us to be, that we may be healed and be a source of healing for the community in which we live. The Lord be with you.
rejoicing in God's new creation, let us join together in the prayer which Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Spirit of God, hear our prayer for your world and for your church. We pray for the people of the world, for those oppressed by harsh government, those who live under foreign rule, for those in countries destroyed by war, for the dispossessed. Spirit of peace, grow in us. Teach us to resolve our differences without violence and cruelty, that wars may cease and all your people learn to live in harmony. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders and tribes of nations, for all who make and administer law, for all who hold positions of civic authority and trust. Spirit of wisdom, grow in them. Guide them in your way of insight, that they may carry out their responsibilities without favour or self-interest. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, for leaders, councils and synods of churches, for your ministers and for all who proclaim your gospel by deed or word. Spirit of truth, grow in us. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see and hearts to understand that we may receive your word and bear much fruit to the glory. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. For our families, our friends and for ourselves, Spirit of love, grow in us. Help us to reach out in welcome to those around us that we may build relationships of mutual affection, trust, generosity and respect. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in need, for those who live in poverty, those who suffer rejection or discrimination, for those in anxiety or grief, the sick and all who care for them. Spirit of compassion, grow in us, increasing us concerns for one another, that with warm and open hearts we may bring care and comfort to your people. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed, for those who have received and understood your word, for your people from this parish, whose yearly remembrance occurs at this time. Spirit of life, grow in us. Set us free from all that keeps us in death, that with your servants in every age, we may be raised to everlasting life. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
us to be. Jesus, now lead us on. From the familiarity of what we know to the wonder of what you will reveal, Jesus, now lead us on. To transform the fabric of this world until it resembles the shape of your kingdom, Jesus, now lead us on. Because good things have been prepared for those who love God, Jesus, now lead us on. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.